Ano. <laughs> okay, so good evening to everyone. Uh, to everyone, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you here in Alamut's Museum of Art at another uh, session uh, from the series oriented and focused on public space, public art, uh, and this time on performative forms. I would also like to, uh, like to welcome our guests, special guests from Vienna, Anna Witt, and her students uh, from the Angewandte University of Applied Arts uh, in Vienna. Uh, I'll say their names later on because I have to read them <laughs> properly. Uh, and I also would like to welcome Vladimir Havlik, our very own performer from Olomouc, and not just that, also uh, the professor of the uh, Palatsky University. First of all, uh, the Anna will in introduce herself, her work, her approach to arts. And then the students get their space because they prepared quite a nice performance with Anna at the Angevante for a public space. And uh, also this is the opportunity to meet with Olomouc because we would like to invite them uh, for autumn month and for a special workshop uh, which would be led by Vladimir and by Anna with students at the university. And then Vladimir get his space to introduce himself also and bring the discussion back to Olomouc so we can again focus on our own city and our own uh, public space. First of all, Anna, <laughs> just very quickly. She studied at the Academy of Fine Arts in Munich and in Vienna. She currently teaches there. She lives and works in Vienna, but she's originally from Germany, I think. I like her very much. First uh, time I've seen her work, it was in Josefinum, a very nice and very famous uh, medical museum in Vienna with a beautiful collection of Vox, Vox models, actually, <laughs> which I wanted to bring to Alamoz very much for the trainer. It wasn't possible, but at least I've invited uh, Anna to present herself here in Alamoz. Now I would give you a floor to introduce yourself, if I may. Thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you. Um, so, yeah, my name is Anna Witt. Um, I'm working mostly with um, performance, performative intervention in public space, but also video installation. Um, starting from being a performer uh, by myself uh, in, the, in the first place, uh, more and more I got interested in forms of uh, collaboration and also shifting slightly my position from from in front of the camera more into the position of intermediate, um, like um, making collaborations or um, bringing people together. And um, my approach um, to art is um, often based on um, social or political questions that are interesting for me um, that um, I not want to answer by myself, but I want to address it or to 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 reflect, uh, to to create a dialogue with other people um, in certain um, contexts. For example, when doing projects uh, abroad or on, in certain spaces. Um, Today, I don't want to uh, introduce too much of my work because I'm also here with um, um, a group of people. Um, I must say I'm not a professor at the Academy of Fine Arts. I was invited to do um, a seminar in the Department of Site-Specific Art by Paul Petrich. Um, so it was um, uh, uh, six months or like one semester project and so we are here um, presenting our our um, approach which our collaboration and um, I want so we want to focus also on that I um, just want to as I'm here and I'm also taking part in um, triennial I, I I want to say a little bit about the project that, that is shown here um, the um, project um, Coabala Beat. I think it's also connected to our discussion of um, uh, art uh, or education um, in a way. Um, so uh, it's presented in the gallery um, together also with a, um, a video program that will come later. And so the title of the work um, is Coabala Beat. Um, so this refers in a way to Mercy Beat Mercy beat is um, um, in mercy. It's somehow the origin of uh, beat music in in Great Britain, where um, where young people found a way of um, counter. It's it's connected to counterculture. So uh, it's this this was created in a way to um, in in a working um, 
environment, a workers' environment where probably tickets to concerts was uh, too expensive, so they would um, create their own music, but also as a statement uh, like against this idea of m what is main culture. Uh, and um, in in a way, what I what I did, um, I. Um, uh, I did this project in Cologne in, um, in a sub satellite tower, this kind of classical um, um, ta town outside side a town where you have a lot of um, prefab buildings with, um, which is only for sleeping um, and of course doesn't have a lot of um, culture by themselves. It's, it's called maybe... Um, it's only in the news sometimes for um, more problematic news, but not as the center of the, of the culture. But um, what was interesting for me there, because I was invited for a show um, uh, in an in a, um, art space that is almost like a model uh, from Museum Ludwig, uh, which is... Actually, I think the most important, or one of the most important um, museums in Germany, but um, somewhere in the periphery, there is a small, um, like a model from, architectural model, and there uh, exhibitions uh, for young artists take place. So there I was my exhibition. So somehow I got interested in this idea of main culture, counterculture, um, and um, where is the center, or where, what does it mean to be in the periphery? And um, I um, worked with, I, I asked uh, inhabitants of this um, living area um, to record their heartbeat with an ultrasound scanner that's, uh, um, as normally mothers would use it for um, for, for the monitoring the heartbeat of the baby. And um, so um, by that, I, um, I've, I create, it's, it's a, in a way a, a form of a portrait. So because each person has an individual heartbeat, um, it, it's, it could be something like a hearable um, um, yeah, portrait of a person. So uh, I invited a group of street dancers to, to create a choreography to each um, of their neighbors. Uh, so it's becoming this idea of homage uh, or um, so um, in a way they're giving also a form to something what is just hearable. So it's a, it's a way of collaboration which also needs a lot of um, empathy in a way, so creating a dialogue between each, each other and, um, and creating also a form of um, culture just out of yourself, like out of the own body and um, also street dance is something that um, comes from um, uh, the US but it's quite connected to, um, to this, also this, it comes from the street, from the public space and it's, it was also a uh, decided decision to go um, go away from um, dance schools and uh, to kind of uh, create like a own uh, form of dance and so basically that's um, what interested me in this work and um, I think uh, it fits very well to to this um, topic which we have today where um, where also this idea of um, how we um, how can what means education or how could performance be a form of uh, education and um, I think we could um, switch to um, the project which uh, we did um, with the class. Yeah. I think we definitely can. I would just only have one mm -hmm. remark mm -hmm. regarding the triennial because mm -hmm. I like the point very much. There were also, you said quite nice words, right? I don't want to push it, but mm -hmm. empathy, working with public uh, education and such things, it's also important. Usually, uh, if I can bring it back to Olamot right away, we work uh, in public space with static forms, not so uh, usually with performative forms or education public as such, as I feel it at least. We have quite a lot of uh, artistic inputs inside the city, uh, not just permanent, but also temporary, and uh, usually uh, quite ad hoc, I guess. 
what I like about your project, this particularly, but not just this one, uh, is this kind of openness to general public, I guess. It's not a high art in this sense. And what, what quite interests me, and I think it should be quite a huge point in our discussion later on, is um, the way between uh, the performative act in a space with a definitive uh, community or concrete people uh, with body and so on, because we, everybody starts with bodies and then get to conceptual level, right? And imaginative level, I guess. Uh, and between the uh, gallery space or gallery mm -hmm. mode of presentation. And I think this is also something quite interesting for me. Mm -hmm. So yes, definitely invite you to talk right now because you are the new generation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you are also post-COVID generation, which also is quite interesting for, for all of us, I guess. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just say the names mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, correctly, I hope so. And then, then I let uh, you present your work. Uh, so uh, I would like to welcome in all modes, uh, not just Anna Witt, but also Artur Schertenhauer, Lars... <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, that would be nice. Let's clap. Filippo <laughs> Contatore, it's more easier. <laughs> uh, Florin Stanzer. And the last but not least, girl in the group, um, it's uh, Pia Blankensteiner, right? <laughs> And so there welcome. is uh, Judith uh, Raub, she couldn't come today, yeah, so there is. And some more, more Joshua than... Bond also. So I'll uh, try to switch to do video, mm -hmm. because we are standing away from the video. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I just, uh, or I say, uh, I, I can just say um, shortly a few words about yes. how the project came about, um, and then we will watch um, the, the film, and then we will... Um, start uh, our discussion so uh, the um, the seminar was uh, co it's, it was called a worst fear best fantasy and um, we um, somehow started uh, in the almost in the middle of lockdown or just came out of a lockdown where um, um, also university um, classes could uh, take place, I think, for one year or how long. I mean, it was everything was just di digital. So the Angewandte um, started. Um, so it was the first time actually to, to meet again in person. Of course, everything was um, influenced by this experience of being isolated, being in, a, in at home, having this um, digital contact and um, so the idea to go and do something in public space was not so much a conceptual uh, decision in the first place but it was just a necessary thing in order to meet um, and um, starting with this idea of course how um, we're going to, to public space, we are looking for a space um, um, and also kind of defining a space for us because of course everybody knows it's not um, the, not the same so it's if you go to the city center or to the to the um, prefab uh, living area or to um, to some military base so every pu public space um, is just too broad so we will look for a concrete space which will be our um, stage or starting point or also kind of context for um, creating um, uh, our project together and as I intended um, the um, of course also public space was used very different in times of of COVID um, something like um, um, the way how we um, interact um, social norms or also this kind of um, codes switch something like um, surveillance um, increased but uh, and also um, um, the creative use of public space has increased so of course there was negative and positive forms of how to interact uh, increasing so that was actually the starting point and we we looked uh, around, we discussed several places and then decided for one place uh, which is called Columbus Place um, in, in um, close to um, Central Station Vienna as a, as a platform and as a starting point. And um, so also starting with this idea of um, doing individual projects there with um, this kind of theory and context, um, soon it happened that um, 
there was a collective decision or it came just naturally to a decision to make a project uh, as a group, like a real collab collaboration. And also this idea um, from doing something very conceptual concerning um, the space more and more moved away into something in, into in, intuitive and um, bringing much other dimensions into the foreground. Um, but I think first now we, sh we look at the, at the film and then we can speak about that. Okay, so let's try. I just wanted to add that it's a, like, it's a documentation.
So when we spoke about the project, somehow um, we tried to find some core points how to to speak about it or just to describe the process and. Um, uh, starting with the place or the social context, as I said before, we we really started about, um, of course, Columbus Platz. We started with something very concrete, uh, doing something like performative exercises of the falling, like the fall of the monument or even pushing monuments, which is something very concrete, has a political re relation. And... Um, thinking about this pl this place which is um yeah um of course also a commercial place but then um other aspects become more important how how did you feel about this place or do you have something what how how did you 
Yeah, basically we went through a process. We were going in many places with the class to decide uh, for maybe a more historically and politically charged space or more for a socially uh, lively space. Then I think kind of in the same way we approached the whole process, we just kind of find ourselves uh, in this space and then we found different elements that uh, we thought we could play with. I think there was this platform that you saw, the fountains, and also um, this square being a square, but also kind of a non-space, because there is a parking lot, and then there is this uh, shopping mall. Um, we just found that our presence there could have been an interesting shift also. I don't know. So when so when when speaking about the, this space for me um, when I I worked with with you it was quite interesting um, to see that um, from the very beginning this this idea of coexistence in a way uh, become relevant so I felt like um, you were always feeling very um, uh, you were. Um, you were very precise about that you don't want to invade a space. And I think that's interesting because when thinking about um, other, like more historical context of uh, intervention or performance in public space, this idea of um, uh, like um, confronting the audience or like shock or, um, or Invading, invading a space had been classical strategies of art, but here I felt you, you decidedly want a different um, strategy or you are quite aware what kind of power dynamics could uh, play a role. So um, how? how? <laughs> Does anybody want to say something about that? Yeah, so given the social context that we were like, let's say, in an um, more in an outer district of Vienna that is also um, characterized by uh, different modes of consumption and uh, like uh, proletarian, let's say, proletarian, um, yeah, social context. Um, it was even more important for us. To, um, to deal with it very sensitive and to not be um, uh, these kids from art school who go somewhere and conquer a place. Yeah, I felt in a way this was also very interesting. I don't know, in a way we, we didn't really, or at some point we said, okay, this Columbus, it's a name of this place. We don't want to be too much about Columbus in here. But in the end, it ended as something that was very oppositional to me, to this idea of, as you said, this conquering. Because for us, it was, yeah, as you said, very important to be there, be with the, also the people there, and not invade it, and not colonialize it, and not, yeah, <laughs> not, not abuse it also in a way. Yeah, and also doing like something quite subtle where people could also intervene in, in a really playful way. So I felt also this idea of uh, co coexistence in a way that um, had, had to do with the audience and how to address um, something like um, what is the meaning of a place, but it, which was uh, something like a a content in the be beginning, but then became more and more of a background. So it's like the, the, the what, what's happening um, as a performance is uh, just um, coexisting in a way with all this other playfulness which was already in this place. So there is already like perf so much performativeness going on. So and um, this idea of hierarchy, uh, which uh, I felt you always. F um, want to um, break or not to um, is not to 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 f be forceful or to to make your, make some um, some um, that it's necessary to watch. It could be it be just a, a uh, offer or something. 
and that that was interesting for me and I think yeah it's um, it comes also to, to the um, this idea of um, of our collaboration I guess because uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, I thought we will do individual projects because uh, performance is something very individual and I would never force students or artists to do um, my concepts or something. So uh, as I intended, I thought, yeah, we, we will find a place and everybody can develop um, something. But then um, there was immediately this response to, to, to collaborate, to do something together. And I think uh, when you now saw these images, this idea of the group and how these bodies uh, collaborate, it's visible. And also much more, I think there was collaboration within the group in the whole process in how, how we made it. <laughs> or um, do you want uh, or say, say something more? Or? Uh, yeah. Some, I, something else. I just had to, sorry, I'm jumping around mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, no problem. Um, but before um, you said um, something about performance and education also, and I feel that even this uh, shock, um, like shock performance maybe, like how performance in public space, at least in Vienna has been in, in the 70s, um, has some kind of educational, um, let's say, drive to it um, that is in a way also uh, paternalizing or patronizing the people uh, that are met in public space. Maybe it's not, uh, doesn't have to be about conquering the place, but like if you go to a place and you uh, start to scream around uh, very loud and say, look at me, I'm doing art here, um, you're also saying um, to all the people around you that are shocked what you want to provoke that you don't get it and, um, and I have something to teach to you and this was something we strongly rejected uh, the whole group rejected and that also added to a very nice dynamic uh, within our group. So maybe that um, leads to another um, point about the access, I like to be accessible. How, how was it for you? Um, we, I, I don't know if you got that watching the video, but we, we, had a, we had a structure we followed and within the structure we had a lot of freedom. Um, so one thing was those puppets, we called it the puppets, someone would um, freeze and the others could sculpt this person and this was also um, a strategy that worked nicely because other people could just join in because it was easy to understand and we could form um, stories and people could could watch what was what was happening or also our, also we could watch what was happening so the, the, there was um, two guest performers, uh, Alisa, Alicia and uh, Papa Chi. And so there are passers-by um, and we didn't um, ask or invite them to perform. It just happened, but it was also okay because there was, I think, also this um, very important aspect of improvisation. Yeah, I felt that throughout the performance it was also often moments of uh, this border getting blurred between us and audience also. Whereas, or this just, I noticed when you said now that at moments we were just, sorry, <laughs> we were watching what they did with us in a way. And so this, uh, this was also interesting because also in the performance it didn't start like this on the day. We, we performed for I think two and a half hours, continuous you would say. And in, in the beginning we did this really also maybe more inaccessible concepts. We were really abstract shapes, just standing still. I mean, we still, we gave way to the background. We sort of let ourselves, or at least I felt this was a way of le letting myself fall into the public and also giving into something is happening behind me 
you can also watch behind me in a way. But then it, it became more and more that, uh, and it, yeah, a long process of deconstructing of this, we are here not with you, we are performing here, we're filming this, to uh, we are here with you <laughs> and we're just doing this. You can also do it uh, in a way, but maybe not so motivational. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think um, this um, idea of um, access and also improvisation um, it um, correspond is corresponds so the um, this um, we are th that we were um, improvising um, created a situation that um, was not as you said it uh, so we were not giving like a performance a stage performance with an ending and a beginning it was more a, we did we spent uh, the video is you can see it's very durational and this is just a very short except so the whole thing went on for hours and hours after this e uh, event i mean i'm double this age as you, I was going home and I was just dying because it was so exhausting. But um, also we did it, we met there several times. It was also a process. It was this improvisation um, to kind of, um, to, to play uh, this place to, to, to a kind of uh, a different way of approaching this space. So this playfulness was very strong. I felt in certain moments we always almost had something like a flow, something what you know from children when they're playing, they're losing um, idea of time and um, also the, this what we were speaking in the beginning about um, how how, um, what are the codes or how to behave and um, the, um, so it's, it was uh, in a way also this uh, different approach and I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, about like um, how we got into this kind of flow. I think it's also, and sometimes you can see it in the video, maybe the, in, in the whole one. Um, that sometimes we also kind of zoom out of the flow, we kind of lose it. Like there is, it, I wouldn't call it a mistake because it's part of it, but someone does something that is unexpected and then everyone is a bit lost. But I think this, this piece is also about that, about communication, being able to communicate as a group, but also miscommunication. And being a bit lost, trying to improvise, and yeah, failing, but also in the end, like accepting this kind of failure as a group dynamic, because in group dynamics, it's not always possible to communicate perfectly, because this was, was not choreographed. Um, so, yeah. So I think also interesting is this idea of um, like when we speak about um, access, access and access, accessibility, what um, was interesting for me when, as I said, we start, started with something more like a clear concepts or very concrete concept and became much more, more and more getting into this group dynamics. Um, um, that in a way also the um, this the shapes become a little bit more um, abstract or open or, um, or or getting away from this very clear social um, connotation but then of course uh, we are living in a very precious times um, it it also opened up for um, it gave more space to uh, to the people there to make own interpretation and it happened several times that while doing something um, of course people would ca come and approach us asking and so ah yeah it's you have to 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 uh, relieve your stress because we have to do that sometimes uh, or is is it is it dying what you're doing uh, or 
this kind of um, um, yeah to I think that was quite nice in this form of um, co coexisting that the the form of interpretation um, is also uh, it should also be accessible when while doing it of course in in a context which is not the white space uh, it's um, there is um, yeah a lot of different um, ways of reading performance and. Yeah, I think one, one aspect which is, um, also, was also very relevant or is very relevant in this project is the idea of experience. The ex as, I, as we said before, the experience of public space uh, through performance, but also experience um, of the body and the group. How, how was this um, part? Um, I mean, uh, how do you want to say something about this experience, maybe? Experience of the work or experience of as, a, as working in a group? Yeah, like the, the body experience uh, or this kind of... I mean, I think we, we worked a lot of... of um, we, we worked with very physically with the body, like as you can see, there is this performances where the, with a the group and a, this kind of breaking point, like this physical aspects of stability and um, sometimes it's also very close. There is a lot of touching, which, which is, um, I think, a very strong experience. I could also. I was the puppet for a very long time and I was touched a lot. <laughs> Um, and what was most interesting was uh, when when Alice and uh, her father also arrived and also started to form in the video. One could see it with Arthur um, was suddenly touched from behind uh, from this passerby, and um, he was kind of trusting. Um, maybe he was trusting also the group that uh, that we would like intervene if something would be not okay but i feel that here even this border shifted a bit towards the whole square like from to the outside of our group and Arthur and me uh, and the, uh, the puppets had the feeling okay um i feel safe here and and yeah i'm i'm open to this transgression of border like, especially during corona yeah, everybody uh, tried to uh, not touch, even touch things that other people touched. So it was even this history of touching that, and then there was this direct touch there with uh, complete strangers. And and then um, the other thing was also to touch them uh, afterwards, like feeling invited to now also uh, reconfigure their bodies and also play with their bodies. Yeah, it was really transgressive. So maybe Arthur, um, you said it before, but um, I, I want to just um, say it once again. Um, what was interesting for me, um, because I think also even like we are different um, generations, so I. Um, my approach is different uh, even than yours, and for me it was also new, exp I, I, like a, a interesting experience because uh, I I I, t I took part in the performance, so which I haven't done for a long time. So it was, mm, yeah, I also kind of uh, let go <laughs> or were kind of um, were into the new uh, like experimental thing and um, thinking about. Um, yeah, roles. Um, what what was important, but um, as as we we said, yeah, there we didn't speak so much about the the, the space. So there was this um, Columbus space, and um, and and which is um, of course um, interesting in many ways because it's lively. It has um, this kind of um, Working, it's a work, former workers' district, but now, um, of course, um, shopping mall. I think uh, here in Olmuk, you know, these places where um, sh sh shopping malls appear. They're probably not very well working. Then you, then there is a strange um, history of um, Columbus, which is there in many cities, and then. Um, 
the question how to deal with it, just doing it as a um, direct, um, like, do you... Do Do I, as an artist, um, am I free enough to just do my thing there or am I obl obliged to react to that? Um, that's quite um, interesting. And um, But then I felt the group decided as a strategy um, to, to, um, to just uh, like to behave op in an opposite way. So this idea of um, care and um, sensitiveness um, collaboration. These are all oppositions to forms of um, consumerism or um, kind of this, um, also this idea of, um, of uh, um, Columbus and uh, being a, a conqueror. So, so it's more the way how, how, how this, um, yeah, how to, the strategy itself, how you how that group acts, and in this way I felt the group became also something like a metaphor for something like that could be how do we as a, a bigger group of people interact with each other, how do we behave, and um, so I felt this is a, a shift that is quite contemporary, and um, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I really felt that that's uh, interesting. It was nice. <laughs> I enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. As a theme, no, it, it appeared. Did this give yeah. you an interpretation of your teacher, or it was it was your intention to work with you? I would say it was. Um, Okay. Uh, in, the, yeah, you in, the, in the very first, uh, at our very first meeting where we were still in a classroom, um, we talked about this, this problem of artists going somewhere and taking space from someone else. And, and yeah, we didn't like it. And then we started looking for a space and just by incident, this space was called Columbus Platz. So um, we didn't work with Columbus. We just stated in the beginning, this is not how we want to do it. And then we were looking for a space, but. And I also um, uh, want to uh, point out that in, uh, somehow I, um, I, I felt I'm not, uh, I, I'm not in the position of a teacher. Uh, the project, project then developed much more into a collaboration, so I wouldn't even put myself uh, in this position. Yeah. So I think yeah. Uh, also the form of the course or became this idea, followed then much more this idea of collaboration and um, equality in um, this how decisions were made so um, and even further like uh, yeah in the performance itself uh, where there is this um, starting with idea of the individual body um, in other parts which you haven't seen now in this um, excerpt but starting with something like falling on the ground which is more like aggressive and vulnerable into something then uh, like um, Yeah, the group and giving in, um, giving the space to the body and uh, uh, to to react to each other. This kind of so it 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 was more like a dynamic process and even in the in the form how we made the course, um, it was very I, I hope so that it was very atypical uh, 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 hierarchically because um, that is also in my. Um, normal working mode. This is something which is very relevant for me um, to not only uh, reflect on topics, uh, social re relations and hierarchies within a society, but also to, to think about this mode of collaboration. How, how as an artist do you approach um, um, the audience as well as people who are participating in projects? Um, so, Yeah, what, what are the relations within it? So I think, yeah, this, uh, this is important. A little bit uh, further to your question. Um, I think this Christoph Columbus uh, uh, presence at this place, at this square, um, 
that's that's a metaphor that in the aftermath now that we edited the video and so on became somehow a strong um, yeah let's say topic um, that fitted well what we had uh, as, as discussed as a group for ourselves that we don't want to go and consume places but what is not a metaphor and what is what is very real is like this mm, maybe one can say aggressiveness of a place that is made for consumption that a whole square is dominated by the facade of a shopping center and there is huge um, uh, advertisements basically say um, come here and buy things buy our stuff and we didn't want to uh, we decided like against uh, also being like the shopping center ourselves so what matters is the, the real dynamic I think yeah if I can add like personally for me the presence of Columbus in the place was almost like a funny presence uh, I feel like we were playing with this idea of being fake conquerors, doing acts that were not at all uh, bold or loud. Uh, we were there, we were uh, an alien presence, we were acting in a different way than other people, of course, but uh, at the same time we were blending out because we were also doing really simple things and going through on with the performance, as we said, also people join. So, yeah, that's how I feel about Columbus. <laughs> and also, I think it was interesting um, by doing it for um, like this duration, this idea of durational perfor performance in public space, because then it starts also to this idea of what um, normality um, shift in a way, because. Um, so so easily and so um, it becomes just um, very uh, normal what you're doing or this this question um, one of the group she said like oh, finally I, I, I thought about um, how can I feel free in public space by doing this when first of, co of course there is a lot of shame uh, doing something exposing yourself but immediately somehow we get swallowed by um, by a kind of normality um, just by going there uh, I mean we, we went there several times it was becoming more um, more and more natural for us to do something there but um, also for people they would maybe um, just in certain moments there was nice um, events when when there was this uh, puppet acting and suddenly there there was created something like a love scene and um, to guys, they would just be become so. Oh, oh! Now maybe there will happen something. Some, and so they 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 gave us a lot of attention. But uh, five seconds later, we were already for forgotten. And um, yeah. Yeah, I felt it was very often quickly reclaimed. This stage, especially, I mean, the Columbus Plus from an architectural. It has this very interesting, just literal stage in the middle. It's an empty sockle, I don't know how to say it in English. Platform. And this is, I don't know, how, it's odd because it's used a lot, but, but not as a stage necessarily, often more than, more as a sitting option. But it was interesting because it, it was very often quickly reconquered or re retaken by these people and they weren't really bothered by us then being like 10 centimeters away, which I felt was also a bit successful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe just uh, as a last thing before we can go on to the uh, next part, uh, what you said before about the question like, um, how, how, who, is, um, how, who, who is addressed? Is it for the museum? Is it for pub? Who's the audience? And I think in our case, or as I felt, of course, we, we made this video um, basically for you, but um, I think there was no invitation for an for a audience. Um, there was no, no public event on Facebook that um, people could come and watch, so it was... Uh, um, just uh, for us, in a way, others could could attend, but um, 
Yeah, I think, but but it was a performance for a performance, so it's not, it's it's. I think it's not meant as a as a video work. It was. It's it's really a performance, and um, the video is a documentation of the performance of this evening um, uh, afternoon, and um, the audience was ourself uh, and and the surrounding. Um, how did you? Um, no, yeah, I, I, I feel the same as you said. Yeah, and also thank you for saying again that like the video is, is a documentation because the important part was more the approach of being there, doing our thing, but at the same time being aware of being in public space. And yeah, we were also uh, thinking like in, a, in our conversations, uh, what does it mean for us to be in public, sp public space to have this kind of audience? We come up with ideas, like we thinking back at the process, how we felt uh, the public space as, um, and so the people, passer, passers-by as uh, um, a comforting presence, because you know that you're not alone. You're not, not the only actor in the scene. You're not just in the stage doing your thing and people are watching you. People are doing their own things and we are there, we're doing our own thing. Um, and also another thing I think that Pia said, was uh, about uh, the fact that if you are in public space, people are still watching you. So you have this kind of contract with, with the audience and so you have to keep going. If you do it in a, in a, for a video, in a, I don't know, in a dance thing, in a dance hall, uh, you don't have this kind of motivation, this kind of contract with the audience. And I think this was really important. And as a very last thing, just because uh, as a starting point, we had this idea of um, COVID and how um, how public space was changed. But um, immediately as we started working, I felt like you you were just over. You didn't want to to um, occupy any more thoughts about it. You, you it it was more like um, we want to go on. That was the feeling, and that's how that was um, created created. Thank you very much. I think it's really lovely, and I, we get to all these points later on. I would have one question for public, actually, because they are still listening and not uh, telling anything, and it should be a little bit more performative, I guess. So my question would be, where you ever been? have you ever been part of any performance in public space? Could you imagine the situation you see some performance going on in public space and try to intervene? I guess Gina definitely have. No? Yeah. So I'll give you a microphone, and if you can tell us, would you? <laughs> My English is already not good, but French. Bon, merci beaucoup. Alors, je veux parler français, c'est vrai, non? Bon. Uh, I hope I that I understand very, uh, quite well your question. Uh, Yes, I would like to say you my little experience. What I what I um, have the ch chance to to live in Paris in ninety in it in in early nineties when um, I was very happy to participate on the on class of Marina Abramovic. Uh, in that time, it was. Professor Invité, a teacher invited by direction of Beaux-Arts. And of course, it was so strong emotionally for me because I admire her plenty years ago for a wonderful video with Ulai, her, her partner, with also so strong emotions from her performing performing action with her destruction of her body and uh, so for me it was wonderful experience in the time and there was two theme for me I, I divided two ten one work meditation 
together. It was very strong for me because also what was important to say that it was in wonderful space of Bozar Academy, a really historical monument with fantastic atmosphere. And the second, it was uh, really this um, period of changing of all Europe in the early 90s, of course. I was very sensitive of it, and plenty of uh, actions was really to examination with, with body. And um, so I am plenty of emotion even, even now to look your experience, your, your, uh, your work. And uh, of course, uh, I ask myself every day if every one of us is also some performer in her everyday life, of course. <laughs> so, it's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it was part of a joke. <laughs> Anybody else would like to share some experience? Okay, in that case, I would move to Vladimir and give him some uh, space to introduce himself, and then we can discuss uh, in more lines, I guess. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'd like to remind the title of uh, this uh, event, uh, which, as I remember well, is uh, Worst Fear, Best Fantasy, which, uh, which was uh, really inspiration <coughs> for me, uh, for my um, sort of returning to my past <laughs> activities, and I thought both of these are very important for, uh, for making performance, to be afraid of something, which is about social, political uh, situation, about personal emotion and so on. On the other side, uh, to, to be excited uh, for new uh, imagination, for new images, for uh, fantastic <laughs> experience. And so, so I, uh, uh, it turned me <clears throat> to some uh, choice of uh, some slides from my past uh, uh, performances in which I, I felt this uh, ambiguity. Uh, this calls attempt to sleep, and uh, it was done in uh, 1982. So in that part of my life, uh, which was in uh, so-called socialism, uh, because half of my life is uh, part of socialism, <laughs> and second half uh, so-called capitalism. So, uh, of course, very different uh, uh, conditions. So, so this this uh, one was to to take freedom, as as Anna said, that it's it's, it's very much about to be free <clears throat> to do something like that. And so during that time, uh, I felt uh, as much free as I was able in the nature. Which, by the way, uh, if are, we are talking about public space, we usually think about, about space in cities, but the same way I think is important public space as a, as a countryside. So the idea was very simple uh, to cover uh, myself with, uh, with uh, grass, uh, turf, and to, to enjoy uh, sleep. I was very sleepy, <laughs> so I hope it could. Uh, uh, I can manage that, <clears throat> and uh, the condition was great. Uh, bird singing, flower scent, but so I was not <clears throat> afraid about anything. I was that that moment was great. On the other side, what came in in my imagination, in my fantasy, came very uh, very deep feelings of to be death to be buried because of heaviness also of, of that uh, turf. So after 20 minutes, uh, I almost uh, uh, was mad. <laughs> that, that psychically, I, I wasn't able to keep going with this performance. So, so I uh, quit this absolutely. Uh, unexpectedly, and, and uh, that balance uh, between 
uh, not being afraid, being free, but uh, on the other side, uh, start so that imagination was started produce so so many unexpected images <laughs> that it almost killed me. So first experience. Uh, then <clears throat> that's because uh, maybe I can, I have to say. Uh, uh, my uh, strong uh, uh, connection with uh, with nature is because I was living in my till my 18 in the in the village in Highlands. Then I moved in when I was 18 to Olomouc, study here. So I tried to to bring uh, nature in in town. I uh, replaced uh, one cable stone with uh, with flower with narcissus. I, I planted there and. Uh, I was very afraid to do that <laughs> because it was public space and I had to say almost every uh, unusual activity during the socialism was, uh, was a danger for a uh, regime. So I, I could expect uh, some, some reaction. For, uh, uh, people can uh, react bad way or even secret police and so on. But I was very surprised <coughs> because uh, people passing by, uh, they did as if nothing, as they didn't see me. I'm, I'm not here <laughs> because they were afraid. They were afraid, me too. <laughs> but they were even more afraid to react because they can see something uh, unusual. And it's another interesting moment of to doing things in public space. That in certain moments, people feel uh, uncertain. And uh, so they they don't uh, give you attention. They even play not giving you attention, like a poker face, like I cannot see anything. <laughs> so, so the second experience, uh, not so lucky in another uh, 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 intervention in town. It it's, uh, was idea of exchange, uh, public s pu uh, symbol of public space, which is a tile from a pavement and uh, the symbol of, uh, mm, say, private in intimate space, which is the, sa the same quadrant which I cut, I cut from carpet in my apartment. And here I am giving carpet uh, besides or instead of uh, the, the tile, and I was caught by police. And uh, they accused me uh, that I, I tried to steal uh, socialist uh, uh, ownership, so uh, the, the tail in socialist property. And it was hard investigation, uh, and even they, they uh, uh, were more angry because uh, that I want to mask, I want to mask that stealing with, <laughs> with something <laughs> putting there. <laughs> and it was, it was one hour investigation in, at police station, and I, I told them that in my apartment uh, is, is the same uh, measure uh, hole, and they, uh, I invited them to, to uh, see it, and they, they started to be such a uh, wonder, such, a, such curious, because I think they were looking for uh, not seeing the hole and to, to uh, punish me. <laughs> but uh, so, So finally, I get them in my apartment, and they really saw this, this hole. And it was a very interesting moment, which I like very much, because uh, there, uh, in that moment, uh, the crime activity turned to, to madman activity. <laughs> and uh, they, they stopped the investigation, and I'm sure they have that story for all their life because it's a nice story and I, I like uh, that moment that uh, unexpectedly uh, can something happen with uh, uh, people around you, as, as you said also, and they can, they can have a uh, uh, strong experience and can, they can uh, talk about that, like a story I can imagine, <laughs> coming home and <clears throat> telling this, uh, but absolutely in different interpretation which I think it's great that it's not just only uh, in, for insiders, but outsiders have experience and we cannot control that. <laughs> so, 
uh, this I switch, I uh, quit, sorry. Uh, and um, uh, what I appreciate very much on, on your work is, uh, is a non-invasive non way of how, how you're doing things. That's great. Uh, I like very much that uh, poetical and uh, humor uh, approach. Uh, and that, uh, that you are uh, not creating stage. Usually, a uh, performer really marks on stage. Here I am. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> so, so that moment I, I don't like very much. I, I like uh, that uh, space is still free, tra transparent for, uh, for people. They can move in, they can move out. And in certain moment, they uh, they realize that something is going on, but it's not central central stage. It's like a periphery or something which which not uh, bother them. And so so I like that sharing of of space, and I'm, that uh, I tried sometimes to to use uh, in a very simple way. Here it is sharing water. I I has brought water in my hands, and give it to another. And other people, and uh, they gave they gave it to and other people. Of course, the water slowly disappeared <laughs> from their hands. So uh, this also I like that uh, using almost nothing. That it it happens with any any tools, just something very simple and and so on. Then site specific. It's it's a, a big challenge uh, how to do this uh, because we we can. Uh, point on certain view our uh, attention uh, and then think think uh, very much uh, about uh, what to do it with this and sometimes what happen is that uh, and I don't like it very much uh, that it's, it's very uh, uh, a rational approach like like everything is uh, till the last detail <laughs> done in, in concept and then it's a little bit then that uh, that feelings during doing this uh, site specific things are, are under influence on the, on that perfect uh, concept with ideas like you know like to play this site specific thing so i like more, more open situation you even don't know what, what can happen here this is in opava town uh, where, where I was invited, and uh, I, I noticed that uh, there are many uh, people uh, walk, walk, uh, walking their dogs uh, here, and <laughs> and uh, some of them are making uh, gar are, are throwing garbage uh, around them. So I, I invite some people, and we created dogs from that garbage. <laughs> so. And walking the same way, like uh, like uh, uh, like with dogs. Uh, this is nice, a plastic dog, <laughs> nice one, I think. <laughs> and so, so we met, of course, these people with the real dogs. <laughs> I was hi, hi. What about your dog? <laughs> Very nice dog. <laughs> and, and so uh, again, it it was done some way critical, uh, but not not that hardcore way. Like you are making garbage here. Uh, look, you must. They can get it to, to garbage can and not here and, and so so on, so so it's soft and with humor and I realized uh, that some part of your activity uh, was done that that way and so it's near near to my uh, approach. And with students, uh, I think it's similar. I try to uh, offer to students some activity which can which can uh, bring them a possibility to realize. Uh, uh, this connection between body, space, time, and of course, uh, uh, connection uh, one to another and so on. So this is uh, thinking of tree uh, and uh, different connection with nature or uh, with the space around. And what's interesting that that idea has uh, has came again uh, now during that uh, pandemic time, and I offer it to um, yeah <laughs> to Jakub is there, <laughs> curator of uh, Opava exhibition. So it was done uh, uh, six months ago during the pandemic time, and uh, of course the wooden stick. Uh, is uh, just uh, two meters long, <laughs> and so people in Main Square created uh, that distant communication. 
I don't know how they feel. Maybe Cuba can say <laughs> they enjoyed or <laughs> yeah. It was again this collaborative moment, the very yeah. strong. We invited, well, of course, these were people who came to the opening of the exhibition who we invited to participate. Yeah. But so they were somehow interested in the, in the art process and so on. But yeah, in the end, it was, you know, just fun making it on the main square of the, of the town. And so, so the, of yeah. course, there were like very, uh, many coincidental. Uh, I hoped I hope that people bypassers uh, also get stick, <laughs> be sticked <laughs> to 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 this of course people from from uh, uh, from opening of exhibition and maybe the last uh, attempt which concerns uh, all modes uh, here. Uh, th this is a gap between buildings uh, just by the, the main square, maybe you, you passed by. And uh, it was very ugly, ugly space and some 10 years ago. And so uh, and nothing happened there for a long time. And so we decided to the students uh, to, for, for one day, for, for uh, about 12 hours, to create apartment there. It's also a lack of apartments in, <laughs> in all modes and all these troubles with accommodation for students and so on. So it was nice opportunity to have accommodation. We created floor, floor plan and, uh, and we moved there and uh, we lived there. We even <laughs> get an offer from the window. Somebody told us because we, we had television and he offered us electricity, <laughs> so, so we <laughs> were switched in and, and showed our uh, videos. And um, I showed because I tried to do this officially, and that's the story. I, I uh, was uh, at uh, many, uh, many offices, and uh, that experience is really terrible because uh, one said to me, this is not the right place. You have to go to the door number 240. Then I, w I went there. They said, "No, it's it's uh, we can say we can we cannot uh, per we cannot uh, double it permit it. Yeah, uh, you must go there, there, there. So one hour, and uh, you can uh, uh, maybe guess that uh, after uh, several of offices, I went to the first one." <laughs> And so, so we realized with students, we decided to do, <coughs> that it's impossible, and we decided to do it guerrilla way, and it was fantastic, because that small fear, yeah, was big fantasy. And <laughs> then, what can happen? And if some policemen uh, and they passed by, and it was funny because uh, 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 nobody was nervous very much. So uh, I can realize that if you do things with uh, without that. Uh, classical fear that you are doing wrong, wrong things in public space, even police uh, thinks that uh, it's okay, it's permitted and so on. So, so th there were some uh, examples, uh, maybe the, la the last one uh, is this one, uh, one student, one of my student work, there was a McDonald uh, just on the main square, just opposite to the Holy Trinity column. It's not now, but uh, and uh, 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 student Peter Sprinzel realized that these three windows remind that uh, 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 Leonardo da Vinci, <laughs> uh, famous image. So uh, he invited homeless people to have that uh, that uh, last supper in front of McDonald. He bought them. Uh, he bought them from. Uh, for his uh, money, uh, uh, hamburger for everyone and, and beer, and and, and was uh, great. I was hesitated. He he uh, discussed it with me. I said, I don't know what could happen. If uh, it's also about ethic questions, if they are used or not used for uh, for making art and so on. But uh, I believed him because it was done with uh, such a pure <laughs> uh, trying to, to communicate with them and to give, it, to give them some, some experience. So, so it happened 
very nice way, except of uh, uh, sellers from McDonald's, they called police, and uh, uh, students has to uh, has to protect this project. And uh, finally, they uh, fortunately after after they eat and <laughs> and uh, drunk uh, the beer, uh, they have to leave because uh, there is a, such a law. You can you can uh, be here, but without table. If you are using table, you must ask for permission for for you know. Sp uh, taken space for something. So I hope uh, that could be some uh, back, <laughs> uh, back remarks to your activity, which uh, I, I think uh, for, for me is very, as I said, uh, near this approach to do things uh, with, uh, with that soft, uh, poetical way. And I think that that has the same way critical, critical uh, impact as to do it direct conf uh, the way is, uh, as a direct confrontation. Even I think it's more impact because it's some image which people can remind and uh, they have to think about. And if it is direct, uh, I can say even political uh, protest, it's clear. Yeah, and, and of course, I, uh, <laughs> there's not nothing against. <laughs> I'm very uh, glad that people are doing this, uh, but this is uh, also a possibility, uh, even in the time of political art <laughs> and social, uh, social turn and, and political turn, uh, uh, that it's possible to do it that, that, uh, that soft or non-invasive way. So I've written down quite a lot of questions, some were answered already, but um, first one, and perhaps there is another microphone, so it would be very nice if public would also would like to ask something, it's quite open. Uh, but my first question would be, uh, and it was already mentioned, uh, there is a different experience with public space, not just because of the generations of our speakers, but also because of the change uh, of the social and political context. So the first question would be, how do you really think about public space? What does it mean for you? And why have you chosen it for your work, I guess? Uh, you can start with what you guys. Uh, yep. <laughs> so I think the public space is, uh, uh, for me, uh, it's all space, uh, which is not private, <laughs> and even private space can can be sometimes can turn can switch sometimes to to public. So uh, I try to have no no limitation with uh, with if I have idea or if I believe that it can be it can be uh, done. Uh, uh, for me, is important as a positive gesture. So I use the space uh, uh, without thinking that it is, uh, that could be some some problems. But uh, what maybe one remark uh, th th because uh, th th this uh, big difference between uh, activities in socialist time and now in, in socialist time every unusual thing was uh, was very strong strong because it was unusual and nobody <coughs> and no interpretation for that. So, so there was something like an image you really have to notice and not avoid, even you did, that you can see it was strong. And uh, now uh, there's many interpretation. It could, be, it could be experimental advertisement, it could be political something, uh, it, I don't know, uh, of course, street art and, and uh, all, all these things. So, so that's that's I think very different uh, how to how to move uh, attention now uh, to our uh, our way way we would like to offer. Maybe some of you want to say. Um, to me, public space is is a nice material to work with um, because there's very different aspects you can you can cover historical aspects um, social aspects or architectural aspects um, and as a I also enjoy art in public space art um, public space as an exhibition room because because the public space is my space and I don't need the permission from anyone to show something there <laughs> with 
<laughs> with uh, restrictions, of course, but uh, um, yeah, it's my space, and that's why uh, I don't want I don't want it to be taken. So I find it uh, find it a very precious a precious thing, and that's why I like uh, working with it or dealing with it. Don't need to be thankful for it. Also, mm -hmm. don't need to be thankful for it. Also, it's also refreshing. Yeah, I feel like I have to be more and more thankful. Yeah, but not for public space. Yes, because it's taken and taken, and so. Uh -huh. okay. um, when when I started uh, to work in public space, it was um, maybe also just because of practical reasons. Because um, as as a young artist, I didn't have the money to um, to rent big um, um, film studios. Uh, also, I mean, it was never the, my intention to work with actors. So um, it's uh, I I like uh, very much this um, a Greek. Um, idea of, um, of um, the forum or the place where um, there can be um, like this where people uh, or the populace uh, meet and discuss things this kind of democratic um, aspect uh, but uh, I also did a lot of proje projects which maybe sometimes when being not so precisely fall into the aspect of public space but I invaded a lot of spaces <laughs> atypical so but I really I felt more in this classical way of invading for example air I did performances in airports uh, in shopping malls and these are or in, in we did performance in bank uh, banks in hotels in commercial spaces uh, so of course this is not public space in the beginning it happened to me by accident I did something in a pub in a shopping mall and I thought ah, oh, it's public space but Actually, it's not so. Then I get more and more interested in how, yeah, as you said, it's public space is getting less and less. And I think it's true. The, this, this, there is this, yeah, the the shopping mall or even private public spaces um, are um, and and commercial or, or even the the companies are becoming our new private space because they're taking over functions of public space and so I felt as an artist it's also interesting for me then to go for example into the company and trying to do works there uh, or to kind of push or play with these borders uh, where yeah, where is our common space uh, even if this word of common space is already a little bit overused um, but I think there, yeah, it's interesting to still, yeah, to to experiment with the borders also. Uh, one reaction to Pia, maybe. There is a Polish um, art historian, Dolka, Dorota Folga Janusiewska, she is called, and she uses the term pangraphism. Like uh, we are living in some sort of a structures and we are taking different points from it, putting them together and uh, rebuilding the structure itself. And I think it's, it might be a possible way how, how to think about public space when you are in a space which is built from historical layers to social layers to architectural layers. And you are working with these different kind of elements and rebuilding the space. So you are making the interpretation. And um, to all of you maybe, uh, on one side we are still, and it's, this is the most important thing for me, and this was the reason why to invite you and why to think about performative forms. Uh, there are so many positive aspects in this, like sharing, collaboration, education, other things and other things. Uh, especially uh, if we are uh, mostly and usually think about in the terms of collaboration as such, and openness, and, uh, and not to be um, Columbus <laughs> in the first sense, but in the second sense, right? Uh, but on the other side, who has the right to enter the public space? because I think it also on the other side might be quite dangerous, right? Not just for the performer, but also for the public. And I, and I don't think that the public space is uh, getting smaller if we are entering in and trying to communicate something, um, but it's definitely a space which is shifting somehow, right? And uh, do you understand what I say? Okay. Uh, are you able to react somehow? Because also we can go to politics, right? We can go to your current situation in Central Europe. We can think about Hungary, for example, a situation in Poland, whatever. 
can you imagine, because it would be good to be practical in somehow, can you think about uh, some example of bad practice, for example? Uh, or do you have some experience with bad practice in a public space in this domain? Anna, do you have the idea? Do you mean just in art or in general? Mm -hmm. in general. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, referring um, to our project and uh, another project that I, I did, which um, uh, I think um, now, uh, especially in um, there is uh, in, in the um, there is this right wing t tendencies in Germany, uh, but also in Austria, where um, classical formats of political activist, uh, activism are more and more taken over by the identitarian uh, somehow um, formats as demonstration or um, agit, uh, ag agit um, uh, occupation and all this kind of classical leftist um, strategies maybe from the 68 generation now is more and more um, yeah, taken from the, from the right and I think that's also why uh, sometimes I feel a little bit um, um, without tools, um, or there is a, a, a generation without tools. Uh, sometimes it's, or or then there is this wish um, to um, op make an opposition. I also not only that um, there was a strategy of um, not aggressiveness. Um, I also experienced it in a project with um, teenagers and. Um, Doing their, I did also performative intervention with them, and they totally refused anything that has forms of milita militant forms. Or um, and the title of that project is um, the radical empathy. So, and when I showed it to um, people, and uh, um, they they would say to me, um, "But why this cannot be radical? Because there's it looks so." Um, there is no aggressiveness or so um, and that's um, so I think uh, yeah this this wish to find new forms because there are old forms or I don't know I don't want to call them old forms but some forms are wrongly used yeah I don't know that's my experience or my feeling what, what do you think or you We are getting back to the, uh, I think, ethic question. Uh, there was also uh, some uh, discussion here uh, how performance uh, can be between aesthetic and ethic and, and uh, how to do moral <laughs> performance. Of course, it's, it's also danger because uh, 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 what's moral and what's not. But anyway, I think it's a very personal uh, decision for, for, for me. It's, I, uh, for example, I was very much thinking about so-called extinction, extinction rebellion, uh, which is half uh, political activists, half um, art activists in, in, in here in Czech Republic, and they really are radical. They they stick to themselves <laughs> to to the uh, uh, highways and so and so on with glue uh, and and so on. So so it's it's really uh, some way aggressive by. Uh, I can understand why, because the great idea behind, like, to, to protect <laughs> our climate and so on. So, so I I can uh, tolerate uh, things which are even in certain moment uh, hmm, aggressive, but I, I cannot do I cannot do that. <laughs> so that that's just personal decision. We are radical. <laughs> Maybe uh, I don't know. It could be interesting uh, to to uh, to to hear uh, some uh, opinion about where is the uh, border between uh, 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 I don't know positive <laughs> uh, act positive gesture and uh, something which uh, which is uh, revolution uh, revolutionary. David, do you want to say something about uh, with that revolutionary appearance in your face? Ty vole, já jsem chtěl jenom poslouchat. 
Um, yeah, sorry. Uh, so, hi, my name is David. And actually, I just turned off my brain like two minutes ago because something uh, hit me in the pocket. It's uh, just mobile phone, you know. And so I'm not sure what, what are you asking about. Once more, it's, it's about uh, your personal, uh, say, border or if you make difference between positive uh, performative activity and something which we, we which you can call uh, i don't know like a strong even aggressive protest or or uh, revolutionary <laughs> thinking and so on and i i uh, remind about uh, uh, about it, extinction rebellion that activity which uh, which uh -huh. is yes uh so I don't know, I think that uh, most of the things which I saw or where I was, I liked. Uh, even or despite that there, maybe they were kind of um, in the way which you did, don't, don't like, like you said that, uh, and I like this uh, approach to performs, uh, to making performance in streets without trying to bring um, some kind of huge amount of attention. I like that, but uh, I've been uh, with the performances, with art performances, or with some kind of activism, uh, which was different, which was trying to bring attention. And I think that both approaches are all right, or they are okay if if you, or if if there is some good meaning of of it. Uh, but sometimes I think that, and maybe it's problem of art or uh, of activism as well that sometimes um, when these actions are maybe I don't know uh, too aggressive that some general public uh, uh, then start to think that uh, people are uh, in this community they are only thinking like in this radical way and sometimes I think that this maybe is counterproductive because uh, people are talking about more about uh, like this young people, for example, from Extension Rebellion or something like that, are radical and they are trying to bring, uh, you know, socialism maybe again and this kind of stuff here in Czech Republic is, a, for me, it's a big problem because, uh, like, when you say that you are a little bit left-thinking person, you are basically a criminal person because, uh, because of our historic uh, experiences. So this maybe this is a bit problem when when the when general public start to thinking that people are uh, doing this uh, and they are radical and they are thinking only in a radical way. So this can be kind of as I said counterproductive because um, the thoughts or the things thinking of ours of or or whatever I don't know uh, which kind of group you mean for example but for example the groups which are trying to bring attention to climate changes topics and this kind of stuff they are good they, these topics are good but uh, sometimes the general public they uh, take the attention to uh, some kind of totally different problem like I, I don't know um, maybe I'm now I lost myself in my thoughts so I'm sorry <laughs> But you know what I was trying to say, right? Okay. <laughs> Anyone wants the mic? Uh, I'll ask it public. Uh, would you like to react? Would you like to react somehow? Okay. Okay. Um, I think I totally agree to what you say that there is a para uh, that it, there is it should be um, both ways, and I have it. For, I know it from my own experience where, while doing um, a project last year that had a clear uh, political intention to um, to make awareness about um, um, a problematic monument in, in Vienna, and we did an artistic invention, uh, intervention. We did it planned because we know there will be election and then to get attention for that. Um, and we used art as a strategy, but for me it would be different than my other artistic practice because it somehow um, this clear intention um, um, of, yeah, a clear political intention is something else than uh, artistic concept, which has for me always this uh, freedom of, um, of not 
um, having to uh, change anything. It's more this kind of, for me, it's important that there can be this um, this idea of, um, um, yeah, um, the, the to to extend thinking or to, yeah, just not to have like this, the uh, um, this yeah something clear as a as an end point or something. To just observe in a way. Yeah, the, the just the freedom of the art um, and not this kind of using so in the, the um, artistic strategy. Yeah, actually, I think it's quite nice. There is one American philosopher, Alva Noah. He's called uh, Alva is Alva, <laughs> and uh, he thinks about art as a special tool. Actually, uh, with we. Uh, I, don't, I guess, turn to ourselves also and the vision of the world we have. So there doesn't have to be a practical solution, but we still have the solution in mind when we are thinking about the world, right? Uh, do you have some question? Please ask. Or would you like to do some performance right now? Or like leave the museum <laughs> for a dinner or something like this? Would you like to ask something? Martino, would you like to? Okay. My family is waiting. Uh, critical. Not, my question was: If you, uh, uh, if you will continue with some uh, individual project, like, for example, Vladimir, because uh, to uh, to beat or the, uh, not to be shame, it is. I, th I think the most important in the space public. When you are a group, you uh, have more uh, and bigger force, but can you imagine to work by yourself, like Vladimir, because I think it is, it has, it could have um, a much bigger force of your um, art expression. Uh, if the question was a continuation of these concepts, or, or yeah, this is for yeah, I can imagine myself alone in public space. Um, but a continuation, a continuation of a project like this, I can't imagine. But because it it was a big big part of it being a group, and also the the way of. You know, it was something that we also discussed along the way a lot. This, uh, how do you act as a group? Reiterate. Uh, my question was wrong. Uh, your uh, study subject is performative art or not? Not, not <laughs> only. Yeah, not only. Not, not only. only. Okay. But we like now it. I understand more. So uh, it is no only one way you want to continue in your artwork. No. Okay. Lots but uh, was uh, this experience so strong that uh, one of you will continue by this way? <laughs> you go? Yeah, yeah we, we can also both go. Okay, I'll go first. You go first. <laughs> um, I think like um, just um, this was a possibility to explore something that uh, is probably going to come up again like in, in our practice in the future. Like, at least in mine, for sure. Um, but this doesn't mean that it's it's gonna be my my first choice as a medium. But yeah, and also maybe coming back a second to uh, your your comment about being alone and being a group. And I I totally agree. Also, when Anna was talking about um, how uh, um, uh, an invader, she felt. Uh, it's in some in some occasions uh, being maybe in a shopping mall or something like that. I think this this feeling has also a lot to do with being alone, with, because if you are alone and you're doing something, it means that you're addressing the the people that are around you. If you are a group, you can also do like just address the group, and so uh, it's much more confronting with the people and much for much more demanding, and I think requires. Different, a different approach, which is which is not better or worse. It's just, yeah, a different challenge. Sorry, maybe I, I lost the point. You go. Um, 
Yeah, but working as a group is, I think, one way to learn very quick because there is uh, so much uh, similar or comparable um, experiences uh, within the group, and I really enjoy it. it I, personally, I've worked in groups since uh, the, the past two years now, and I think uh, I learned from so many people, and also being uh, stronger in a way to be more visible also within the field of art as a group is really, um, I think it's a, it's, a, it's also a strategy how to um, find your way around within the, within the field of art and to get in contact, get in touch with more people and um, for the moment, yeah, that's, I really enjoy meeting a lot of people, which I would not if I, if I would um, be on my own. Um, But I get your point um, with um, maybe be getting getting more precise if you uh, also go out alone. Uh, I actually quite admire the choice, and I think Anna was talking about this, that you've decided to work, work together and not as singlers in a group. So I think this was quite nice, actually. And now we can go back to your singular life if you'd like to. Um, any last question to conclude this evening? So, okay. I just have one simple question. Uh, you talk about uh, documentation of your project. And I, uh, I just want to ask you if you were thinking about, wow, be careful, man. <laughs> <laughs> about, uh, basically about this, because we, we are friends, we are uh, cameramen or camera guys. So I, uh, I wanted to ask you if, uh, if uh, when you were doing your performance, did you think about presence of uh, camera, or did you forget it at all? And do you think that performance, performers or you uh, are somehow influenced by a presence of camera, or maybe even uh, the audience or the people around you? Uh, we were very fortunate to have a cameraman that did a great job. We, 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 it was very easy to forget about him. And in the end, he delivered very good footage. And, and I think it was also easy for the standers by to not care for him. You know, or not be afraid of him is probably a better way. They cared. No one kicked him or something. Yes. Uh, yeah, but also um, sometimes it happened that people would ask uh, to maybe someone that was not in the action at the moment, or oh, are you shooting a film? Or people would like maybe just stop and go another way. But as, uh, as Arthur said, I think uh, the idea uh, of our cameraman um, was to I, like to use a hand, handy cam and just uh, shoot in a really uh, natural way, so not with, with big cameras and everything. So it's, it was really subtle. But for me, for myself as a performer, it, it changed a bit. Like already this idea that we, you have to forget that there is a camera is already an element in the performance. But you know, it's also like, it's also about sharing these kind of experiences. So it's important to have documentation, I feel like. Otherwise, we would not be here and everything. I just wanted to add that we, we discussed that before. It was not just something that happened. Uh, and it, so there was several uh, like ideas how to, even uh, we spoke about filming ourselves, just being the group and then always having the camera with us. So um, because there is always, um, the camera changed a lot, um, I think. So I know it very much also from my uh, artistic practice where I'm, in between some bit performance, but also working with video and video installation. So um, we're starting with uh, performances and doing more this kind of very rough, just alone in public space. Then there is a camera on a, a very small camera on a tripod, no thoughts about camera at all. To, until nowadays where um, I feel um, like for, 
first I, I realized uh, camera is, um, it can, I can also use it as a tool for um, interacting with others because a camera always gives kind of a reason. So what uh, Vladimir s said, um, like when he did these actions and he would, it would be just out of any context, nobody know what he's doing. Um, as, as soon as you have a camera nowadays, everybody just thinks, ah, okay, they're doing Instagram, uh, they're making uh, whatever. So it's camera can become, for my, in my case, where I work often with also collaborative forms, uh, even I worked with engaging people um, out from outside of the fields of art, uh, um, a simple way of um, legitimization, because otherwise um, I, I made the experience doing performances with people uh, without camera, it's just too, it's too abstract to do something because there is no reason. As soon as the camera is there, it becomes, um, you can easily do things and it, you're not totally weird. It's, it gives safety also and uh, I think filmic strategies are becoming important, but at a certain point I also experienced it can, there can be a breaking point when, when when it becomes then only acting for the camera and that's something else. Yes, maybe I, what I can add, that, that's right that, uh, uh, that, that my activities uh, from uh, 80s was done uh, with only one friend uh, uh, with small camera and he tried to be hidden. So, so no, uh, at the public they couldn't see him, which was very important. And, but I think now it's impossible to, um, uh, to skip it. Uh, as a performer, performer, you have to know uh, how, to, how to make shooting. <laughs> so, uh, set an instruction. Uh, uh, we were lucky because, or, or I uh, was lucky because my friend was able to shoot it uh, perfect way even without my instruction, because my, my main, con my main uh, concern, uh, concern was uh, to do performance. But now I'm sure, even from my experience, it's necessary to speak with cameraman and to... Even I saw, uh, that's funny, that one <laughs> festival I saw a uh, performer who uh, performed, uh, he, he, or he performed, and he realized that it's not good uh, documented, so he did it instruction during performance, like shoot it from <laughs> from from the left side, from the right side. <laughs> so it's it's sometimes funny uh, how much some performers are taking care about documentation, and it's visible that some some of them are just uh, uh, focused on camera, where is it, and not very much taking care about the audience. So it's a new time. <laughs> Actually, I think it's quite a nice conclusion because I think we have this experience from last two years, uh, all of us actually, how the camera uh, helps us to approach the world and see someone behaving, acting, living actually in a space, right? So it's not a question because I don't know if, if we have answer, but um, what I ask all the time is uh, if really COVID changed our situation and our uh, view of the world, I guess, somehow if uh, it might change and break something good, for example, in the future, we'll see, probably. Uh, I wish you all of the luck, <laughs> because it was really lovely to have you here. Anna, Vladimir, you also. It was a nice evening. Thank you also very much. Uh, and I hope I'll see you uh, very soon at another discussion or at another program in the museum. So have a lovely evening. Good night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.